Toronto's railway is about to get a 25 kilovolt shock. This is the GO expansion, a $12 billion plan to string over 600 kilometers of overhead wires and lay another 200 kilometers of brand new track, and all without ever stopping the trains. The payoff is subway style frequency every 15 minutes, delivering over 5,000 trains a week. Sounds simple until you try it while diesel locomotives thunder past your worksite at 120 kilometers an hour. So how do you rebuild a railway this big without ever hitting pause? This is the GO expansion, Toronto's mega railway. So even if you've never been stuck on Ontario's infamous Highway 401, you probably know Toronto has a serious transportation issue. Consistently ranking as one of the most congested cities in North America, Toronto's highways were just never designed for today's pace of growth. And while Toronto expands rapidly, projected to surpass 12 million residents by 2041, the city's commuter rail, Go Transit, still relies largely on diesel technology first introduced in the 1960s. Originally built to move people to and from work during peak hours, Go's diesel fleet still struggles with demand that now extends well beyond rush hour peaks. Miss your morning train from Oakville or Ajax, and the next one might be hours away. The numbers tell the story clearly. Ridership is surging towards 175 million annual trips. Without major upgrades, congestion on highway and rail lines alike will only worsen, choking economic growth, harming air quality, and forcing more residents into lengthy daily traffic jams. So in response, Metrolinx, the regional transportation authority, crafted an ambitious solution called the GO expansion. The concept sounds straightforward. Electrify five key rail corridors, add 200 kilometers of fresh track, and ramp up service frequency dramatically. On paper, GO expansion promises a radical shift from the commuter rail Toronto has today, transforming it into a subway-like system with trains running every 15, 10, and even five minutes, all day, both ways. It's a $12 billion investment designed not just to ease congestion, but permanently reshape how millions of Toronto residents commute. But there's one massive challenge. With hundreds of thousands relying daily on these lines, completely shutting down the railway for years simply wasn't an option. The entire project would need to be constructed while trains kept running, a logistical challenge on a scale Canada has never attempted before. Every night, at precisely half past midnight, crews spring into action. As soon as the last scheduled train clears, teams take control of the tracks. Safety flags are positioned, work vehicles roll onto the rails, and a meticulously scheduled four-hour work window begins. Crews pour precisely measured concrete footings exactly where the trains passed only minutes earlier. And laser measurement tools ensure each concrete footing is accurately placed, guaranteeing tomorrow's double-stack freighters can safely clear the wires. Then come the steel masts prefabricated off-site, precisely engineered, swiftly lifted and bolted in place. Finally, thousands of tons of wire are strung span by span through Toronto's sleeping suburbs. By 4.30am, inspectors clear the track, the red flag lifts, and minutes later the first airport express glides across infrastructure built overnight. But overhead wires alone aren't enough. Crews must also lay 200 kilometers of additional track through corridors tightly hemmed by suburban homes, factories, and protected green spaces. Single tracks become double, and double tracks expand to four. And it all happens in darkness, at speeds, out of sight of the sleeping city. These nightly performances have already begun rewriting Toronto's railway map. Take the notorious Davenport Diamond. Once the site of 250 train conflicts daily, now replaced by a sweeping 1.4 km elevated flyover. Completed in 2023, it saves critical minutes from Barry Line journeys and quiets previously noisy neighbourhoods. Then there's Canada's busiest highway interchange, the sprawling motorway 401 and 409 junction. Underneath its 21 busy lanes, crews carefully excavated twin rail tunnels just three meters beneath the road's surface, creating critical capacity without disrupting traffic above. Suburban level crossings like Burloak, Steeles and Rutherford are systematically disappearing beneath brand new railway bridges, eliminating long traffic queues, dangerous pedestrian crossings and incessant horn blasts. In total, over 40 crossings will vanish by the end of the project. And if you're enjoying the story, Airside Vision covers the world's most ambitious infrastructure projects. So make sure to subscribe now so you don't miss what's coming next. These carefully planned improvements directly translate into noticeable benefits for daily commuters. Faster journeys, safer roads, and fewer delays. 
by early 2025, the Lakeshore West Line saw its first electrification masts rise, marking a tangible start to Canada's largest ever rail electrification. Shortly afterward, on January 1st, 2025, Deutsche Bahn's On Express Consortium formally took operational control of GOAT's network. For the first time, the team building the railway became responsible for running it, making sure accountability is built into every rail, mast and wire. GO expansion also brings revolutionary digital signalling technology. North America's first network-wide ETCS Level 2 system. Think of it as the railway's digital brain, letting trains run much closer together while maintaining safety. Track beacons communicate wirelessly with trains via a secure and dedicated network, continuously updating train speeds and safe distances. The tech can rewrite timetables instantly during snowstorms or breakdowns, reducing delays and keeping commuters reliably informed. Passengers will see dramatic onboard changes too. Alstom's new electric locomotives pull upgraded bi-level cars, accelerating twice as fast and eliminating over 25 million litres of diesel fuel each year, according to project estimates. That's the same as the capacity of 10 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Rides become quieter, smoother and significantly faster, shaving as much as 20 minutes off typical trips from Burlington or Oshawa to downtown Toronto. Stations are changing dramatically as well. 42 stations across the network will be rebuilt or newly constructed, featuring modern designs, accessible platforms, bike storage, solar powered roofs and real-time travel updates. Toronto's Union Station, the busiest rail hub in Canada, is getting additional track infrastructure to manage the coming surge in passengers. Meanwhile, areas like East Harbour are becoming lively urban hubs anchored by transit. Environmentally, Electrifying Go will slash per passenger emissions by 90%, thanks to Ontario's largely nuclear-generated clean electricity. By 2031, highway construction could drop dramatically, removing as many as 145,000 daily car journeys from Toronto's roads, massively improving air quality and commute times. The future for Toronto's commuter railway looks even more ambitious, with Lakeshore West set to fully electrify first in 2027. Corridors to Barrie, Kitchener and Stouffville will soon follow, scheduled for completion in the early 2030s. These improvements mark just the beginning. Metrolinx is already exploring further extensions, pushing service east towards Bowmanville and west towards Niagara Falls to capture rapidly growing commuter markets and tourism opportunities. Longer-term visions could even see rail service extend north towards Barrie's surrounding regions, potentially reaching Collingwood and other popular recreational areas, turning weekend ski trips into comfortable rail journeys rather than slow highway drives. Every new mast raised today has these future possibilities built directly into its design, with extra track space, stronger foundations, and advanced signalling systems ready to handle expansion decades down the line. Already, communities along planned extensions are responding positively. Real estate values are rising, local businesses are growing optimistic, and municipalities are factoring improved rail access into their urban development strategies. It's a sign of how transit investment doesn't just improve travel. It reshapes entire communities, economies, and ways of life. Beyond impressive statistics and ambitious blueprints, it's the real human stories that illustrate the true value of Toronto's mega railway. Hundreds of thousands of commuters across the Toronto region will no longer dread late night shifts downtown. Instead of navigating exhausting journeys through endless brake lights, they'll board frequent, reliable trains home, reclaiming precious hours with family and rest. Students throughout the greater Toronto area will commute into Toronto for midday lectures or evening classes, without the anxiety of missed connections or overcrowded trains. Frequent and predictable service means smoother journeys and better educational experiences, completely reshaping what it means to travel into the city. For thousands of families heading downtown for festivals or concerts, the days of circling for costly parking or crawling through traffic are numbered. Instead, they'll step from comfortable train seats directly into the heart of the city. These stories highlight what GO expansion truly represents. Not just a rail upgrade, but a fundamental shift in how people experience Toronto. Less stress, cleaner air, more reliability, and more time spent enjoying life instead of waiting for it. So Toronto is building its railway the hard way, working meticulously each night under darkness, under constant traffic, without ever pressing pause. When the final wires go live and the new timetable rolls out, Diesel Thunder will finally fade into an electric whisper, reshaping the everyday lives of millions across Canada's largest city. Toronto is finally getting the world-class, reliable transit network it has chased for decades. This is Toronto's $12 billion mega railway, the GO expansion. 
If you enjoyed this video and want to see more groundbreaking projects like this, make sure you're subscribed to Airside Vision.